Mike, Mike, you ready? Two point three minutes. According to my clock, we're ready. Welcome, everybody. Glad you made it. Glad you came tonight. And Mike, did you bring all the roses? I for the ladies, not for the guys. Oh, okay. I got brownies for everybody. <laughs> you got brownies for everybody. There you go. We got brownies tonight. Let me put it this way. Brownies first come for a serve. <laughs> Glad to see everybody out tonight. And it's a pleasure to have you. Okay? Thanks a lot. Okay. We got quite a little program tonight. I am doing a lot of talking tonight. Are you nervous? Okay. We got a gentleman here from the fair in, and I told him I'd start with him, otherwise I'd forget. So we're going to start with him, and we're going to go from there. He's, gonna re he's got a report. The most interesting thing I found out is what we call the people that go from here and, and work at the fair. They're called docents. I thought we were volunteers, <laughs> and when I went to... to Ask somebody about volunteer t-shirts I was seeing. He said, you're not a volunteer, you're a docent. Which is kind of cool, because that implies that you know something. I mean, you know, the guides that take you through art museums and zoos and such, know stuff. So I can live with that. That was good. Um, I s Let me give a quick thank to the docents we sent there. Alan and Cynthia Blair. Todd and Amy, uh, Todd and Annie Jones, John and Susan Derevek, Thelma Proctor, and Jack Hawkins. All did shifts up there this uh, this past week, and we were well represented uh, with stuff in the fair. Um, William Clark had his got a first in his uh, standard hollow. Well, his category was standard hollow vessel or vase. I put a friend's huge on that besides, because that was a, a very large thing. And we had Pat Kerr represented us with a first in an embellished bowl. You need to bring that thing back, Pat, because that looked real neat. Once they the they won't let me go get it yet. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. <laughs> once, once the marbles kind of disappeared into <laughs> the, uh, the epoxy, it looked a uh, real nice, nice thing. And he also had a uh, third in the table. Now I have a question. Do we have a gentleman named Gilbert Sam Rennie in this club? He lives in Bradenton, I saw, and I didn't know whether he was a member. No? Okay. He's so not here. Is he in the club? Not, well, I, that I don't know either. I, I, I don't know, and I didn't, didn't take the time to look at that thing. Anyway, he, was, he had quite a few things in the fair. And that's about all I got to say. You got one more that got first place up there. In uh, this club, I missed it. Then who's Bill? Where is he at? No, that's the first one I said. The oh, big, was it? Big face. He, oh, I didn't even he, hear your he name, had, Bill. He had half a display case to himself. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he was. That was just listening for his own name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're good. Oh, yeah, it's on the other end now. Huh? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> okay. My wife painted two pictures on a woven tray, and she got first place with both of them and best of show with one of them. And they were both really kind of side by side. They were really, the worst part about it is she got it all done painting them, and she, I bring them down here, and she says put a clear coat on top of it. So I went out and I put a clear coat on top of them, and one of them beaded. I was afraid to take it home, but she fixed it, and that's the one she got best of show. This is her dream to do. She's got a room upstairs in the house, and she's there every day. She loves it, loves every bit of it, so... Yeah. And I'm going upstairs, you're leaving? Yes, okay, good. <laughs> I think we should have a round of applause for all the artists. Yeah. Uh, what did you use for the clear coat? 
uh, Lacker. Yeah. Uh, M.L. Campbell. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's it's got quite a it's got quite a hardener in it. I use the crystal. New people, we got some here tonight. First timers, no? Yes? Raise your hands. Oh, there we go. You got it. Uh, make very odd looking furniture. <laughs> Jack. I'm Ron Cochran, originally from Ohio and been here since 1977. What do you make? Welcome. What do I make? Yeah. Nothing now. I drink coffee. <laughs> 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 That's right. Back there in the corner, in the behind. <laughs> I'm Dana McLeod, and I'm a construction worker slash woodworking enthusiast. Uh, um, I don't really make anything in particular yet. I'm still learning, but okay. drywaller, painter, flooring, I do all kinds of stuff. So this is just another thing to add to my repertoire. There you go. Good. Anybody else? Yep. yep. Uh, I'm Ty Brewer. I'm basically the same thing as he just stated. Uh, sold a lathe to a gentleman here. Uh, hey, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he, he suggested I come by and check it out. Okay. Great. Thank you. Anybody, Anybody else? else? <laughs> you? Your new face. Okay. All right. I'm Steve uh, from Philadelphia, lived here for a couple of years now. I am a wood carver and I do a lot of live edge countertops, faux beams, faux mantles, box mantles, all types of different things. Great, thank you. <clears throat> okay, awesome. New people, welcome. Old people, welcome. Old people, welcome. That was quite a comment, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm, I got to keep up with what I'm going on here. Oh, how many read that beautiful newsletter that you got? Awesome, wasn't it? Now, if I have written a new, couldn't even come up with the right word, a newsletter, it would have gone something like this. Hey, we got a meeting on the 14th. You got to be there. It starts at 6 and 7 o'clock. I passed the buck off, so that beautiful letter came from I, I'm thinking real hard, Greg. I'm thinking. <laughs> it came from Greg, so it should have read, written by, in my name down below. <laughs> I did not pick on you that much, Greg. <laughs> so, yes, thanks, Greg, for doing it. There's, there's a whole... We had, a, we had a board meeting, and throughout the, the, this board meeting, it, this is where I, one of the things I want to, you know, I stand up here and do this, but what puts, to, to put this meeting together, it takes a lot of people. Mike's one of them. The other Mike is another one. Alvin, he, it, he's the new one of them. He is our new one of them treasure, okay? You're shaking your head, Alvin. <laughs> and Larry. And Larry does a tremendous amount of work. Does the filming, does this, and you get newsletters from him too. Yeah, yeah. newsletters from him. And Alan Blair is our treasurer. Huh? Oh, that's right, you're the treasurer, aren't you? Okay. We just voted on that, didn't we? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Joe Minky, who is not here, researches and finds people to come up here and speak to you guys and tell you things that you know or don't know. And 
I'm looking for a helper for Joe Minky, or even two. Just somebody that <clears throat> is not afraid to pick up the phone and I don't know, I don't know where he gets a lot of his people from. Uh, I'm looking for a gentleman that's not here. This, yeah, son of a gun, okay. <clears throat> Anyhow, we need help to find people to set up here and, and you know, like veneer people, all kinds of different stuff, wherever you're interested in, we want to have somebody that is some kind of professionalism. You hit the bottom of the barrel tonight, but that's neither here nor there. So, <clears throat> kind of looking for volunteers. If I don't get volunteers, I'll start picking on them, won't I, Alvin? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and we had a little changeover this year, and I cannot thank Mike Wood enough because he dove in and he fixed a lot of things that he dove in. Let's put it that way. So I'm going to turn a little bit over because <laughs> uh, I have a leadership thing that says you don't have to do everything. Isn't that, isn't that right, Mike? <laughs> so we had a board meeting and we made some decisions and instead of me trying to screw it up, I'm going to kind of turn it over to Mike and, and let him kind of tell you what's happening okay thank you any questions <laughs> was this the same board meeting that we kicked uh, that last guy greg uh, greg, greg did we kick him greg off big at, at, no, big uh, <laughs> big house <laughs> yeah so again we had a board meeting to update the bylaws the bylaws uh, uh, are supposed to be updated every five years just so happens this is the fifth year, but there's been some changes made to the way we're organized, so we wanted to codify them. We have or will send each one of you a copy of the bylaws, so you'll see what's changed. What we do at this meeting is announce the changes, give you a chance to ask questions, and at the next meeting, the group votes the members present to accept or reject the bylaw changes. So in March, we'll take a quick vote of what we have for the bylaws. The highlights of the bylaw is that we've changed the terms of the offices to two years. The president is two years. The vice president becomes the president for two years. The secretary and treasurer both have two-year terms, but they can be renewed to a four-year term. So they are term limited at four years. The president is only two years, but he's already been vice president for two years before that. So it still get that cycle going. It helps, we believe, with some really good continuity of what's going on. It's not easy to change every 12 months. Not everybody's here 12 months. You've got all kinds of things going on. So I think it's a really good change that'll give us continuity. We wanted to make sure also that we're encouraging engagement here. And we've looked at some of the things that we've done. I want to try and understand it is a not-for-profit group. And things like the holiday party, we had a couple of really great people that spent a lot of money on the auction, basically paid for the holiday party. That's not what we really want to do. So again, particularly, there's a couple of people that really spent a lot. But we're trying to make it so that it's easier for everyone to be more engaged. One of the ways is to have different kinds of fundraising. So that's why we just threw, threw it at you tonight, just to confuse everybody, see who still stays standing. But one, <laughs> and Mike, Mike didn't stand, he just sat. <laughs> so we, we were getting to the point where we had a lot of raffle tickets and a lot of raffles and it went on and on and on. We decided to cut that back. So we still have three or four door prizes. We'll upgrade the door prizes a little bit. There'll be $25, $30 kind of door prize things. And then we'll have one raffle that's of a good, good product. So this month, it's these jet clamps. There's, this one is the 24-inch model. We have two clamps. They retail about 100 bucks each, and we have two of them. So with that, we're asking for one $5. You can do five tickets however you want for a chance to win. 
we'll draw just like we did, but only one. That person wins the two tickets. So hopefully we can pay for what it costs us on those things, and we'll have to gauge that. The second thing that I think is kind of interesting, I hadn't heard of it before, is what we call the 50-50 raffle. That's the blue ticket that we're pushing. So a 50-50 raffle is a 50% donation and a 50% prize pool. So you gave $5 for one ticket. $2.50 goes to the club. $2.50 goes to the prize pool. So if your number is drawn, you don't necessarily win, but your number's drawn. So think of it as the, the um, Powerball on the lotto. You, first you gotta get the five, then you get the Powerball. The second part of it is if your number is drawn, there are 10 cards sitting at my house that I forgot to bring that are the ace of clubs and the two to 10 of clubs. If you draw the five of clubs, you'll get $5. So basically your ticket's paid for. If you draw the 10 of clubs, you'll get $10. If you draw the ace of clubs, you'll get whatever money's left in that prize pool. Tonight, so far, it's $80 if I counted right. So half of that goes into the prize pool. So $40 tonight. So you can get $5, $10, or $40. But if nobody wins, that rolls over to the next time. And the ticket that was drawn doesn't count anymore, but also the card that was drawn. So say you draw the nine of clubs. That card gets tossed out. So next time, it's one out of nine. So your odds are better the next time. And you add to that pool. It could go all the way down to one out of one. If nobody draws the right one, and Larry again talks about his Rotary Club, that's exactly what happened at his Rotary Club. I belong to a, a Rotary Club. We have weekly meetings. And it was similar deal. You buy a ticket, and then you got to draw a card. We had a whole deck of cards, 52 cards. There's 52 weeks a year. You know how long it went before somebody drew the winning card? 51 weeks. By that time, the pool was $13,000. We won't hit that here, but <laughs> it builds up, and as it gets less and less cards, it becomes more and more fun to play. And again, you're not limited to one. We'll take more money. We have no problem with that. You can buy two, you can buy three, you can buy whatever you want. We will not have the drawing in December because that's our holiday party. So the other 11 months we'll do it, but we only have 10 cards, so we'll run out of cards every 10 months at the most, probably more likely, more frequently than that. But the odds get better and better and better. Once the ace of clubs is drawn, it starts all over. So it starts at zero for the next month. That way we get a little bit of money. We get $40 coming in that helps pay for the snacks, that helps pay for the drinks. And again, remember the snacks are in here now and the drinks are in the refrigerator. Helps pay for some of the things we do. Those are the biggest things that we changed. And uh, all the accounts have been updated. So Alvin's on the account with the bank now that Randy's gone. If you have any other questions, please let us know. The bylaws will be posted on the website behind the firewall as well. So you can really take a look at them. But we have it highlighted with the changes so you'll know what's going on. Any quick questions? Any bad questions? What is Pat doing? <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. That's kind of an important Absolutely. Point. We changed the makeup of the board as well. There were founding members was one of the board. There's no more founding members. They have all deceased or gone in one way or the other. And the past president was also a member of the board. Since we've already been taxed with four years of life, we said we don't need the past president. Thanks, Greg. Uh, so He's only five. done it for two years. He's this, only been on board for two. The webmaster is the fifth. So there's five instead of seven. President, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and webmaster. I couldn't have had a better vice president. You got, you got cheated, Greg. That's the only thing I can tell you. <laughs> 
Okay, so, <laughs> hey, everybody sign in. I had it written down here, Mike. I just had to get to it. Two before, two before contest. Everybody know what the two before contest is? You know what the number one rule is? One, two by four, eight foot long. And that is the rule. That's all you can use. That's all you can use. That one has a backup board on it. That one just has a smiley face on it, <laughs> okay? He made something there out of two before, don't know exactly which one it was, but he did something. That one, <laughs> that is a two before, eight foot. That is a two before. Oh, I got two pictures of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, now here's the grand champion. That's the one that took home the two before trophy. <laughs> Nobody said you couldn't use a stretcher. <laughs> and that is a two before. Now, does that not look, you know? Yeah. yeah. And that is a two before. Hand done. Okay, that's all of them. That was last year's two before contest. Okay, you've already noticed the items outside of the shop. Everything that if you want something, make an offer, do whatever, you know, dicker with Mike. You can even dicker with Alvin, you know. He doesn't say a whole lot, but you can dicker with him anyway. He'd just, he'd just go, okay, give me whatever you got. You know, yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, <clears throat> so the money goes to the club. There were tools that were donated to the club to sell to the people of the club. So the price is, a t you know, it, it's not relevant. It's just money. Now, what Mike was saying is all of this and everything that we're doing to make money, the club's... Uh, membership fee covers the two before contest meal and the Christmas meal. So all of this fundraising is to keep us above board. Now the club is not broke by any means whatsoever. Uh, and this next two years, it could be really interesting because I like to spend money. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's what, that's what all this is about, just to keep us afloat. So the, the membership fee really just covers the two meals and that's, and that's basically it. And so that's why we come up with different ways to make money. I guess it's my turn to go over here. And am I ready? Okay. Tell me. Thanks, Mike. Okay. The, the point behind what I'm trying to show tonight was how to make a kitchen without having a big table saw. A small table saw or whatever kind of table saw or no table saw whatsoever, okay? Because I'm gonna farm this whole thing out to somebody that's got a CNC. And then all you have to do is put it together. It's not for me, it's for you. Now, I don't do this a lot, so it's gonna be a little clumsy. But I don't know how you wanna do this, Larry. Get a picture of this one right here. Now this, usually if you go to Home Depot, or if you go do somebody that's doing cabinets, they'll do it on every three inches. They'll do an 18 inch cabinet, they'll do a 27 inch cabinet, a 24 inch cabinet, on and on down the line. And, that, and that's what they do. All right, what I'm trying to get at here is this cabinet right here, the guy that the guy that come up with this idea, I, I don't, I, I question sometimes. Okay, is a nine inch deep cabinet, eighty six inches tall. This is a twelve inch deep cabinet, eighteen inches deep, and that one's eighteen inches deep. Okay, and what this did was he had a pantry that he tore out, 
and this became his pantry, a long one wall. The reason for the narrow one was because he had a door right here, okay? So, and w the reason that I'm showing this is this is something that you cannot go and buy. But with this program, you can make whatever you want to and then just put it together in your shop and put doors on it and you got it. <coughs> so this is shelves, this is shelves, this is a drawer with a cabinet up on top, and this is a pantry with seven pullouts in it. Okay? Now let's, let's shoot one more. I'm going to show one more. This one here. I didn't know how else to show this tonight. Okay, that's close enough. All right. So we had a refrigerator, we had cabinets, cabinets, stove, cabinets, cabinets. So everything's equal. So what he had was a 36 and an 18. We had three inches on this end and four inches on this end. That's another cabinet. You really want to get right down to it. So since we're doing custom, we're doing whatever you want to do. We have a 19 inch cabinet, 38, 39 inch cabinet, 39, 19, 37. One inch there and one inch there. Okay, it just bunches it in. <clears throat> so when you do a kitchen, it just this way, you only, what it, it limits to whatever you can think about that you want to do. Okay, so, and, and that's where I'm really trying to get to. Okay, so I put it, this is how I laid the kitchen out. I knew the dimensions across here, and I knew the dimensions here. Actually, these dimensions were given to me because he had an N dimension here, and he just divided them up into different situations. So, <clears throat> and the upper cabinets here are 13 inches deep. How many people have 13 inch deep upper cabinets in your house? You don't. I do. And this other gentleman does also, okay? Why? Because there's a lot of platters that won't fit in a 10-inch in a cabinet. And a 12-inch cabinet is, okay, a 12-inch cabinet. This gives you that extra inch, and, and it just adds, it just kind of adds to it. So, now I come up with all these dimensions and all these different things that you see on here. Then I come back and I'll go, this is cabinet number one, this is cabinet number two, cabinet number three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know, we had 27 or 28 cabinets on there. Okay, now, how I, or how you, really not about me, decide what you want is here, and I've already decided on here, so what do you got up there? So what I wanted first was a three-door cabinet, three-drawer cabinet. So I didn't pick up that piece of paper. Good job. So there, right there, is a three-drawer. Okay. Okay. That's a three-drawer cabinet. Now all I have to do is put dimension to it. So it's 18 inches. All of them are 34 and a half inches tall. Base cabinets are 34 and a half. If you're doing your bathroom, you only want 32 or 31, that's fine. All you have to do is put that dimension in there. <clears throat> if I want a four drawer, I come over here. And that four drawer's got a, it's a 113. The three drawer is a 112. Okay, there's a method to this. Now, if I want an upper cabinet, I come over here. And I want an upper cabinet that's got two doors on it because it's 36 inches, so that takes two doors. If I only want, if I want one with one door on it, which is you can't get any bigger than 24 inches. Because anything over 24 inches, they really don't want to make doors that go that way. So as soon as you start going over 24 to a 20, 27 they'll do, <clears throat> but anything over that 30, they'll use two 15 inch doors, okay? So what I'm trying to say is you go through this paperwork, A, B, C, decide what you want, and you send it to this guy who has a CNC. Now, I don't care whether it's large pantries, whether it's 
when I went over to pick up this cabinet, he had some large cabinets there that were closets. So it, I, I don't care what you want to make it, whether you want to do your vanity or whether you want to do this. You decide what you want to do. This paperwork tells you what you picked from. You put that number of 133 or 131. It tells him what that cabinet is. You put the dimensions to it. Okay. Is it clear as mud yet? Pretty much? Yes. Everything that you buy from normal cabinet companies is in three inches. This is in quarter inch, every eighth inch, whatever you want to put it in. Doesn't make any difference. Yes. Yep. Standard in the industry is every three inches. So <clears throat> now you go back to this layout here. And I take this, and I put this, and I put number one cabinet is 131. I want one of them. It's, the width is 30 inches, the height is 86, the depth is 9 inches. Okay? Okay, so it's a 9 inch deep cabinet. So the inside of that cabinet it's kind of a funny joke about this nine-inch cabinet. Uh, it started out as a nine-inch cabinet, and then after I got all the paperwork done, it, oh, no, it's a nine-inch cabinet, including the door. So, you know, I mean, it, it just, you know, it's all right. It's all right. It worked out fine, didn't it, Ed? <laughs> These are all outside Yes. Yes. Outside to outside. Now, when I made the joke, we had room for nine inches, but it had to include the door, okay? So the first cabinet was important that it was only eight and three-quarter inches deep with a three-quarter inch door on the end of it. That makes it nine, inch nine inches, okay? So, <clears throat> so then I fill this piece of paperwork out to everything that I want. Now, this, no this stuff over here on the side is for my, this particular kitchen and my particular, you know, because this was a black or white, black and white, black and white, because we put the edge banding, the guy that does the cutting puts the edge banding on the front, okay? So if I'm specifying a color, he's got to know if I want white edge banding or black edge banding or not, or if I just specify maple and I'll paint it. Okay, so, e so either way. All right, Larry, where are we going to from here? Wherever you go. All right, that's what you do to send him information. Now let me tell you what you get back from him. Repeat that. All right, what, I am, what I'm dealing with here is a Euro cabinet. Okay, a Euro cabinet has a face frame of three quarters of an inch. This is a face frame cabinet, which you very well could stick it inside there. But on a Euro cabinet, I can't. So the answer is no. Draw on the well, the answer is yes to this cabinet. It's the one you pointed to. The answer is no to these cabinets. Okay, unless you put a face frame to it. These are called face frame cabinets. These are called Euro cabinets. They came from Europe. That's a whole design came from there. And there's a whole big story behind it in there, Larry. Yeah. So <clears throat> now what you get back from him is that, which is dovetailed drawers. So every cabinet that you wanted drawers in, he gives you a list. He gives you the number that you numbered that cabinet and gives you the size of drawer that you got to have. Okay? So he gets, <clears throat> there's the amount of drawers that went in this particular job. Okay? And uh, they're all pretty much one inch, one each. Okay? But they're all 21 inch. I have two 15 inch drawers, so I had to change slides there to go to a 15 inch slide. Okay? Also, you get back from him 
your doors. Okay? These are the size of the doors or drawer fronts that goes on your cabinets. Okay? Your old frame doors are a 16 tier, a 16 tier, and an 8 tier. So if you've got a 24 inch cabinet, it's 23 and 3 quarters in there between the two, divided by two. Okay, yeah. So that's, but he gives you all those dimensions. Now you go back and you cross check them against everything that you got. So you cross check everything, make sure everything fits, fits the way it's supposed to fit. <coughs> And then he gives you an itemized list of every cabinet that you ordered and how it comes together. Every cabinet has got an itemized list to it. Now, this is a lot of paperwork. This is what it takes to tell somebody else what you want. And then he turns around and tells you, this is what you ordered. And then you cross it off and say, okay, that's fine. Now, this is the way you get a cabinet. Now, if you can zero in on that one, can you read it? Yeah. Awesome. So that is a side. What's it say, Larry? Okay. That's the side of a cabinet. Some maple plywood. Maple three-quarter inch plywood. Veneered, finished on both sides. Okay. Finished on both sides. This is the side. Uh, I'm not going to be able to hold this together, so I need a helper. See all these grooves? All these holes? This is a six drawer base. Six drawers. This hole, this hole, this hole, these, and there. Okay? I'm going to back up a little bit, so go ahead. So those holes are for these slides. So when you're ready to put this together, all you have to do is go like this and put a screw in it right there. And you got this slide in the right spot. Level, plumb, done, over. Next one goes in, next one goes in. And there are special screws that go in these particular holes. They're not regular wood screws. There are special screws that go in there. So it's all measured out for you. There's no jiggle, jaggle, done, and it's over with. So each one of those drawer slides can go in there. Now, because you have almost a quarter inch hole in here, so it's a short, stubby screw, okay? No so, point. Huh? No point. No point. No points whatsoever. And they're, <coughs> they're uh, now you see the grooves here and here? This is the bottom, and this is the back, and this is the bottom. This is the top, because that's where you slide your quarter-inch piece of paneling into and through from. So it would be setting like that. And after you got this on there and this on there, it just slides right straight down through there. Clear as mud. Okay. Okay. <coughs> I was, <coughs> was going to put one together tonight. What do you got? Okay, hang on. But... My buddy that has the cabinet business didn't have any outside of this one. So I'm just going to kind of halfway show it to you. Because they're really simple once you get the hang of it to put them together. No. Ikea, Ikea does not put a piece of wood in there in their cabinetry at all. Not one piece of wood. Hang on to that. Now if you got a if you got a dead blow orange dead blow hammer <laughs> This is a big one.
I was going to use clamps. And then I decided not to, and I should have stayed with it. Okay, now just kind of stand it up. I'm not going to go through the whole, making the whole cabinet. There's the base. And there's These are stiffeners. There's a top. There's two pieces across the back, as we call them nailers. They're about this size. They go across the back. You got holes along the side. They're already there, pinholes to r run your screws through. See that little hole right there? Another one right there. Another one right there. Another one right there. So you run your screws there and you hold it together. There's no glue. So they're, they're, I mean, glue if you want to, but they really need to stay a little bit flexible. And not a whole lot flexible, but they are flexible to a certain degree. Because you've got to get them leveled up and, and all that kind of good stuff. But this is a higher quality a cabinet as you can get. Okay? And you can make it. He, he charges about the same price of doing it this way as I can bring it in here if I had my big panel saw and go ripping it through there and dovetailing it and doing all that and stuff. He's about the same price, okay? But for somebody who doesn't have a saw and you want to build your own kitchen, it could really save you a lot of money. He gave you the dimensions for the doors, okay? He doesn't do doors, unless you want to do an MDF door or something like that. He might do, might do that. I'm not real sure. So now, so now you have the dimensions for the doors. So now you go to a door company, which uh, just order them from. Now, if you're a finisher, you finish them yourself, or you can have that company finish the door for you. Okay? Either way. So you can bring it in. I had a good friend that wanted some, wanted a kitchen, and he didn't want to pay my price. And I said, all right, you do the work. I'll show you how to get it done. So we ordered the doors already finished. He put the cabinets together. He used my shop, put the cabinets together. I didn't do any spraying. I didn't do anything. I just, we just went through this whole process, put his whole kitchen together, and he is just tickled pink, okay? Just tickled pink, but he did all the work. Him and his, his wife wanted to do the work, so him and his wife came in, and they did the work, and they put stuff together, and, and, and I, said, I said, fine, but I, <clears throat> I'm not a stainer. I don't like to stain. I'll, I'll paint, but I don't, I don't like to paint or don't stain. I don't like to do either one of them anymore, but uh, if, it's, if, it takes a, if it takes a lot of, lot of different ones. And that's what they call a Euro cabinet. This is a Euro cabinet. No, there is no face frame. A face frame cabinet is, does have a face frame on it. That card over there is a face frame cabinet. It's got an inch and a half face all the way around it. Actually, they do the same thing. They just put an inch and a half face all the way around the same, exact same. They, they say face frame's cheaper than Euro, but I, I don't, I've never tried to build face frame. I, I don't necessarily agree with that, but whatever. But most, most of your new construction put face frame cabinets in a new home. Will you make a face frame for you? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. Because making a face frame has to do with a lot of gluing and a lot of routing. He could do the route. No, I would say no, he doesn't, but I have never asked him, okay? But I've been to his shop and I've never seen that kind of equipment. What he has there is a lot of plywood and a great big CNC that one guy runs and picks up a piece of plywood, puts it on the machine, cuts stuff, takes stuff off. Everything's labeled. So this is cabinet number 21.